Okay, in this video, what we're now going to look at is how you can use Virtuoso's natural language programming to be able to write test steps in the Salesforce. I'm going to be looking at how to create an account. Bear in mind, these steps, though, typically work for pretty much any of the forms you're going to see. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, obviously, creating the account screen, and it kind of shows you the method you use for writing those step steps in natural language. So let's get started doing that. Let's go ahead and add a checkpoint, which is going to be because we're at the moment we're in the opportunities section of the sales console. So let's go open accounts uh, section. Now to do that, I want to open up this menu here. Now this doesn't have a label though. So what I can do is come into the advanced mode, click on the inspect icon here, hover over the arrow. And what I can see is this is called show navigation menu. So I could come in and say, click show navigation menu and save and that will go ahead and open the navigation menu and once that does there we go it's gone ahead and opened so i want to be able to click on the accounts so it's called accounts so we just say click accounts and you can see that really what you're doing here is using our syntax and then what you see on the screen to go ahead and interact and then what i want to do is just say i'm going to go wait for um let's go recently viewed and what that does is it just puts a dynamic wait to be able to say it's going to wait for the page to load up to 20 seconds, but then as soon as it's passed and seen recently viewed, then the page will move on. So now there you go, that gets us into the account section. And you know what I could do here? I could go and add that into my library because that's a fairly generic sequence, basically opening the account module. So now let's add another checkpoint, which is to create new account. So you'll see I'm breaking these down into individual checkpoints, individual segments, so that basically uh, I can control and ideally be able to create reusable steps. So what I want to do now is click, and I can see there's a new button up there in the top uh, right hand corner. So let's say click new, and that goes ahead and loads the new page. So what I want to do there is just say wait for account information, because there was just a page load there. And what that does again, it puts in a dynamic wait time, which just means the test can run as quickly as possible. As soon as account information is there, then we can start running. Now, firstly, here I'm gonna show you a neat feature here because for the account name, you know, I'm probably not really gonna to be too concerned about creating that from test data. I wanna create basically a random name or a generic company name. So there's a really cool way to do this in Virtuoso is which you can create your own natural language. If we come to the sidebar here and click on extensions, you can basically create your own natural language. So I might say random uh, company name, for example. And what this enables you to do is basically create JavaScript that will, in this case, generate a random company name. Now, if you're like me, however, I don't know JavaScript. But what we have is a neat little AI assistant to create extensions here. And then I could say something like uh, create a string with account plus a random number, for example, to make sure that I can create a unique value. And when I do that, it will go ahead and use AI to write the JavaScript for me. So let's just now add that in. And then because I've generated, uh, or it will generate a unique count number, then what I wanna do is just return the account number value. So basically it sends that back to Virtuoso for me to use in the test. So if I now click on save, what I've done is created my own natural language, which will run a JavaScript to create a unique uh, value, which will be a count with a space and then a random number. So basically I should be able to create random uh, values when I'm running my test. Okay, then if I come back into Virtuoso, into the journey rather, what I can do is then add a step, which will be uh, random and I can go company name and returning and let's put account name. And what this should do is when I run this, it will run that random name. And if I click on that, you should see, so it's created account 57 for me. And then what I can do is basically come in and the way to write steps here is to say, click account name. So I'm basically looking at the title and by doing that, you can see it activates the field for me. And then what I can do is say, write account name in input because basically it's an active input field and you can see it goes and writes the value into the field for me so then what i can do then i just want to go press tab and it basically tabs out of that for me 
So now what I can do is come in and basically use those that sort of th sequence of three steps to go and fill in my data. So if I set, say, let's look at my spreadsheet, I've got um, an account number. So let's say I want to come in. So we've got the account number. So what I'm going to do is say click account number. And once I've done that, then it will activate the account number field and then I can write and the variable is account number in input. And what that's gonna do is pull from the test data table to then write the value, which is in, if we see in row one, into that field. So then I could come through and basically start to, you know, filling in more of those fields. Now I've got a rating here, which has got the values hot, cold, and warm. Now for these sorts of fields where it's a drop down, what I wanna do is now say, look for rating, which basically positions our bots at the rating. And then what I'm going to do is say click and I'm going to use the text in that drop down hyphen hyphen none hyphen hyphen. And what that does, it goes and opens that box for me. And then I could say click rating, which is what I've got in my test data as the variable. And by doing that, it will go and click on the value for me. So this one's hot. So you can see that you can start to, to fill in the data basically. And then note that you actually can scroll up and down here so you can sort of look at the fields. So for instance, I could fill in the billing street and shipping address and so on. But, you know, imagine that's all I want to do here. And just remember that, I mean, let's just do one more. For example, let's take the billing city. So the billing city, if we scroll down, is going to go into billing city. So what we want to do is say click and then go uh, billing city, because that's what it says on the screen, which will activate that field. There we go. And then we can write dollar billing city in input. And then just after we do that, we can just press uh, tab. So you can see it's a pretty straightforward sort of method to be able to interact with most of the fields there. And the nice thing is it doesn't matter if those are custom fields or standard objects, then, you know, for instance, uh, you know, you, you can interact with those. And then finally, what I want to do is go and click on these buttons. And what I should do here is just make sure I use, um, and I want to say click, I want to do save, but I should say click button save. Just because in Salesforce you can have things in the sort of background and foreground. So by clicking button save, it specifies it's looking for a button and then it will go and click on the save button. And you can see we've created account 57. And then finally, what we want to do, it's a good idea whenever things are loading in Salesforce, it's just put a final step, which is wait for, and then we can say the account name. And what that does is just as the page loads, it waits for the account uh, name to load. Okay, so hopefully that has been of use. And just as a reminder as well, if you come back to our Discord server and come into our Virtuoso Salesforce forum, then we do have a post on here which kind of reiterates some of the, if you like, best practice for being able to interact with forms as we've just stated. So otherwise, yeah, that should get you started with, with the project you've been able to load in and those steps to be able to write natural language to get you going, uh, starting to create your functional UI steps uh, in Virtuoso. And if you want, in the next video, what we're going to look at is now how to use the APIs to be able to create data, including getting things like the credentials you need to be able to authenticate the APIs.